wonderful job. Let's pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit that as this scripture is read and it is proclaimed that we may be filled with renewal and the salvation of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. Scripture lesson is from St. Luke's Gospel, the 15th chapter, beginning in the 25th verse. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a goat so that I may celebrate with my friends. But the son of yours came back who devoured your property with prostitutes. You killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you're always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and now has been found. The youth, I, I heard that number. Did you catch that? 35,000 meals that you packed? That's pretty good. That's really, really good. Thank you, youth. That's really tremendous. So here's a 30-second recap. You can start the time now. We started out last week talking about the prodigal son. He goes to his dad, asks for his inheritance before, uh, early, took it, devoured it with all kinds of uh, bad living, comes back uh, and says, Father, forgive me for I have done all this bad stuff. The father runs out to him, welcomes him with open arms and says, we got a party for my son because he was lost but now is found and he began and they killed the fatted calf and started to party. I'm sure somebody timed that. That's under 30 seconds, I think. But now here comes the second half of that story. The father welcomed his younger son back from a life of sword living, having spent all his inheritance. And the father orders this grand celebration to happen. And so it happened. He celebrated because his son was lost, but now is found. Return from the dead. But here's the part of the story which maybe even more may relate to the older brother working out in the field, never did anything wrong, never asked for his inheritance early, never entered that casino, never did anything, worked tirelessly in the field for his dad, didn't disgrace the family, so you could see the anger seething in this person. He did everything right, and his brother who did everything wrong was being celebrated because he came back. He heard from far away this party, and boy, it was, it was a party. You could just hear the music blaring all the way into the next development. Well... He didn't want to go in. So just as the dad ran out to the younger son, he ran out also to the elder. Notice that as I was praying about this scripture and said, look, we got to party. We have to celebrate because look, your brother has come home. He was lost. He was dead and buried and he's back. But when his dad ran out to the elder, after that, the elder son began to berate his dad. He said, Dad, I have worked tirelessly for you. 
I have been like a slave to you. I have never disobeyed you. I had never lifted my voice against you. You never gave me as much as a dozen hot dogs, a bag of chips and dip, so I could celebrate with my friends. Yet my little brother, who did everything wrong, when he comes back, you kill the fatted calf. Why is that? He should have been punished. But there you go, Dad. Not only celebrating, but saying, we have to celebrate. Not good enough for the older son. Because he knew his little brother didn't play by the rules. Did a lot of bad stuff. Should have been punished. Jonah was a lot like that. Jonah kind of was the same way. Remember Jonah? Jonah was called by God to go to Nineveh. He said, I'm not going to go to Nineveh. I'm going to go a different way. He got on a boat. Ocean started going. People said, what are you doing? You brought this upon us. People in the boat threw Jonah over. Was sucked up by a whale. In the belly of a whale for three days. you imagine how disgusting that was for three days? Then he was spit up on a, on a beach. And then he was walking around the beach. He probably didn't have his shoes on or anything. It was hot and all this kind of stuff. And God said, go to Nineveh. Because those people have sinned. And one thing, and you tell them that I will destroy them if they don't repent. And Jonah said, I am all over it, Jesus, God. So he got there. And guess what the people did? They repented. Kind of like the younger brother, right? They said, yeah, we knew we we messed up. And God didn't destroy him. Now, you would think that Jonah would be pretty happy, right? He wasn't. He was angry, just as angry as the older brother was. Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. You told me, God, to tell them that they were going to be destroyed, and you didn't destroy it. How's that make me look? (laughs) In Jonah's case, it was all about Jonah. In the elder brother's case, it was all about him. Well, a lot of eye trouble all over again. Eye trouble starts when we start judging other people no matter where they've been, no matter what they've done, not based on anything but their past or anything like that. Not based on whether they have repented, whether they're doing a good job today. It's like somebody once said, it's hard to bury your past when you're surrounded by people with shovels. It is true. You see, when we start judging folk where we think they ought to be, when we start demanding our rights at the expense of others we have lost, that's what the elder brother was doing. We start that early in life. We know that if you're a parent, that baby's screaming until it gets food, no matter what we are doing. God celebrates, not so much in what we've done in the past, but what we're doing now. Not so much by our resume or what we have done, but our attitude towards another. We are judged by our relationships that we have with each other and with God. But if we live by our resume, if we live by how we think life ought to be, as the elder son did, we lose. We miss out on the joy of faith. And we start saying, but what about me? Look what I have done. I deserve this. I deserve that. We forget all about God's grace, right? God's grace says, I don't care whether you deserve it or not, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the love. 
that changes things. I mean, the elder son seemed like a nice enough guy. He was a hard worker. He did a lot of good things. You may have been hearing, you know, I wish more people were like me. You just hear him say that. Where's the morality today? So judgmental. But in reality, it's not about me. It's not about him. It's about us. And God's realm is totally contrary to the mentality of the world. For God's grace turns eye trouble into a celebration of we. We have to celebrate. We have to reach out in grace to welcome another. This is a celebration this morning. Sure, we heard a lot of petitions come up, and I don't know about you, but that, that my heart just was hurting for all of you who were lifting up petitions. My heart was hurting for the people in Paris. We need God, but there is still joy in knowing that God is with us, and we will pray for these folks. That's a celebration, the privilege of praying. No, God turns the world's expectations on its head. God celebrates the loudest when the one who messed up the most cleans their act up, turns back to God, that's repentance, by the way. And returns to a life of joy, of grace, and peace. You know what we're called to that same celebration. The older brother was a good guy. Most of us would be hurt if we were in that same situation, I would imagine. But those who live by merit never give themselves an opportunity to know the joy of grace and the opportunity to celebrate another's return to grace. God's party begins when we begin to enjoy the open arms of God, open to us, open to every other person in this universe. God's world is all about relationship. God runs to those who have maintained a life of peace all their life as much as those who, who forgot about God's peace and forgot about God's law and came back to God. God loves each just the same. How could we stay silent when we know someone else has come back to the glory of God? Or even the stones cry out. I wonder, as I conclude this time up here, I wonder if we die, when we die, if we die, when we die, and go to the pearly gates and old St. Peter greets us, I wonder if he's going to ask a couple of questions of us. First will be, did you celebrate the grace of Jesus Christ in your life? Did you really know the joy of believing? Did you have a good time and celebrate that relationship that you had with Jesus and the relationships that you had with those that God put in your path? And secondly, did you help others by offering God's grace to them and celebrate the grace that God has given to them? Wouldn't it be a shame if we looked back on our life and lamented, I wish I had more fun with the grace I've been given. I wish I was able to celebrate with those that God celebrates. God's grace turns our eye trouble into a celebration of we. Saints, God runs to you and runs to me as God ran to the younger brother as well as the older to offer a gift of grace, the gift of reconciliation. God calls us to go and do likewise. Let the people of God say,